Good evening. My name is Ernie Anderson, and I usually sit out here by the pool, just here, so I can oversee my vast estate here in Hollywood. Hooray for Hollywood. And I want to tell you that you're really going to see a show tonight. It'll be a show that'll be, have a start and a middle, and it'll have a big finish, I'm sure. Uh, they've gone to almost no expense to bring this show to you, much as they did back in the 60s when I was Goulardy over there. And I'll tell you the truth, folks. The show is so bad, it'll make you turn blue. Isn't that right, Joel Daly, wherever you are? Joel. All right, Ern. Actually, this is an entertaining newsy review of Cleveland and TV8, as seen through the eyes of the TV8 cameras. If I had to come up with a title for it, I guess I'd choose something like, um, City Camera. But then again, Jim Doney might have a better idea out in Honolulu. City Camera is not a bad name, Joel, but I think if I were naming it, I'd call it uh, Adventure Road. That sounds like a good title. Sort of an adventure road down 30 years of history of television in Cleveland. And they were good years. They weren't all good television, I don't think, at all times, but there are a lot of good memories uh, during the next hour or so for you. Uh, I think you should watch it just because Dick Goddard is narrating it. You know, a weatherman in Cleveland at this time of the year has a hard enough time without worrying about how many people are watching a prime time special. I'm looking forward to seeing the old woolly bear over here again this year. He comes over about Christmas every year. Uh, he leaves his woolies in Cleveland and comes to Hawaii Bear, incidentally. He'd probably get more people on his tour if everybody knew that. Stick around with Dick and all of us for the next hour. We're gonna have a good time. And to give you an idea of just how long ago that was, Cleveland sports fans were still talking about their 1948 world champion Cleveland Indians. And the Browns fans were enjoying a very successful passing combination, Otto Graham to Dante Lavelli. Fashion-conscious women were wondering if their hems were too short or if their hats were too big. And as I recall, fashion-conscious men were very enthused about a brand new addition to the fashion scene, something called a bikini. Of course, I could appreciate such things back even then because I was a senior at Greensburg High down there between Akron and Canton. I didn't know much about television, but then very few people did. I can remember sitting in my living room the evening of December the 17th, reading all about a news station that was about to go on the air, WXEL. I remember it was quite a big story because it took up not only the entire front page, but the entire front section. I have to admit, as I read about Mayor Tom Burke welcoming the uh, station to the city, and it was pointed out in the paper, by the way, that you really didn't have to watch television with the lights out. That shows you how far we've come. I had very little idea I would ever be hosting the station's 30th anniversary. Heck, my own 30th birthday at that time was uh, 12 years away. But anyway, tonight here I am with you, celebrating the fact that 30 years ago this very night, TV8 went on the air as WXEL. And for the history buffs, we were not TV8. At that time, we were TV9. For the last several months, those of us at the station and our friends all across the country have been rummaging and digging through basements and attics trying to put together a 30-year scrapbook for you, and I think we've done it. It was a hefty project, but we've got some vintage photographs for you. We've got uh, some very precious film and videotape. But then when you consider that I'm really a rookie at the station, I've only been here 15 years, I've had to rely on some of the real TV8 veterans. To help me reminisce. In Cleveland, we'll be visiting with the original TV8 Ohio reporter, Warren Guthrie. Veteran TV8 announcers Howard Hoffman and John Fitzgerald will be helping out as well. So will Big Chuck Shadowski. And as you already might have guessed, we'll also be reminiscing with Ernie Goulardi Anderson in California, City Camera News anchorman Joel Daly in Chicago, and Jim Doney, host of Adventure Road at his home in Honolulu, Hawaii. And you know, I wouldn't be at all surprised if somewhere along the line, former TV8 writer-director Tim Conway didn't pop up. So regardless of the condition of these films and tapes, I'm sure that the memories they bring back will more than make up for the quality. So with us, for the next hour, why don't you just sit back and relax and enjoy the good old days of TV8 and TV9, too.
1950s is remembering a decade when everyone seemed to be smiling. A dashing young announcer named Howard Hoffman had good reason to smile out at Hopkins Airport, for he was celebrating WXEL's first year with the arrival of an elephant, our Republican station mascot. And it wasn't long before Ed Fisher put on an even bigger smile to celebrate WXEL's move to 1630 Euclid Avenue. That was the old Esquire Theater, changed to WJW TV 8. Throughout the 1950s, television salespeople were smiling as well, all the way to the bank. Television sets weren't cheap back then. You could pay up to $600 for a black and white Motorola, but that didn't keep the customers away. Housewives wanted to learn to cook. Hamburger Helper wasn't around yet. The kids wanted to occupy their time while the smoke cleared from mom's masterpieces out in the kitchen. Husbands? Well, they always had an insatiable appetite for sports, but now they could see what they had only been reading about. To whet those appetites, WXEL and WJW crews took their luxurious vans from Municipal Stadium to the farthest suburbs, especially when someone like Edward R. Murrow wanted to interview an Indians pitcher nicknamed Rapid Robert. Bob Feller, his wife Virginia, and their sons have lived in this French provincial Greystone house for eight years. Their home is in a setting of 29 acres of wooded hills in Gates Mills, Ohio, and they have their own baseball field. Just 18 miles west of the Feller home is another ballpark, the Cleveland Stadium. Evening, Bob. Good evening, Ed. How are you? Fine, thank you. How's the weather out there? Very bad. Even the ducks are walking. <laughs> Uh, Bob, uh, I know you're about the oldest ball player in point of service. Uh, is that grandfather clock a symbol of some sort? Well, uh, I don't intend to quit yet, Ed. I don't think I'll quit until you can't come up with a good story. <laughs> well, I hope we have a few years ahead of us then. TVA technicians who worked with Edward R. Murrow remember his person-to-person -person series in different ways. Some were fascinated by his style of interviewing celebrities all over the country while he remained in New York. Others remember how cold the basements were, where the control rooms had to be placed. And still others recall Murrow's unique way of structuring an interview to include the celebrity's entire house and family. I have one boy, Stevie, who is playing a ball now. Stevie, uh, trot down here, will you please? This is my oldest boy. He's 10 years old. Stevie, sit over Come over here and say good evening to Mr. Murrow. Hello, Mr. Murrow. Evening, Steve. How are you? I'm fine. Good. Are you a ball player? Yes. Uh, what position do you play? I play shortstop in the Little League. Shortstop in the Little League. How's your hitting? Well, it's not too good. <laughs> not too good. <laughs> uh, do, you, uh, do you ever practice with your dad? Well, yes. Here, let's warm up a little bit, Stevie. Shall we toss in, a few around here? In the house? It's getting about that time to warm up for a little spring training. Yeah. <laughs> Look what he's got here. <laughs> All equipped. Let's see you throw a couple over the top of this beam, Steve, and see how, how your arm is this year. Uh, that's Ooh. pretty good. See if you can catch that high fly. Oh, now, listen, if you're going to play ball in the living room again, let's go down the recreation room. I was worried about that chandelier there for a minute. <laughs> so were we. Steve, yeah, maybe we can get your dad to uh, lend a hand and show us how well you can cover second when you got down in the basement there. All right? Okay, we'll try that. Yeah, this is our uh, recreation room, which we spend a lot of time in. One of our favorite rooms, and most of our friends like it down here. Here's the rest of our family. Looking back at programs like Person to Person, most of us in television consider it an absolute miracle they came off so well because they were live. Whatever happened during those programs, good or bad, was history for the cameras and all the world to see. And I, for one, can appreciate the risks involved.